lost in our mind And the things that we are searching for They're sure in our minds and the things that we are searching for they're sure Appreciate you being in the Lord's house tonight. We're going to open up our service with prayer. Let's remember all those that are sick and unable to be here. Uh, appreciate our services this morning. Looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. So uh, everybody that can and will, and able and willing, uh, let's come and gather around the altar and um, 
Uh, if not, you, re you can stand and let's uh, remember all these that's on the cross. God knows the need there. All right, Mom would like to be anointed, so that's the ordained men to come around. We'll, we'll meet over there with her, okay? Amen. Amen. Got the usher ready, amen. We're going to take up our evening tithes and offering. Amen. You give us a God direction your heart to give, and I'm sure the Lord will bless you for it. All right, I didn't ask the Lord to bless it. Amen. So after offering plate pass you, let's wave at each other. Pray for all those not here tonight.
Nope, that ain't it. Is it two eighty seven? Two eighty six. How many knows I'm living in Canaan now? How many remember that song? Hallelujah. We'll do the Glory Land way. Two eighty six. I'm in the way the promised I'm in the glory land. may be seated. She got as high, I'm afraid to do, page 287. Amen. I must be having trouble tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. I wonder if somebody's got a song or a testimony tonight. Amen. You got something burning on your soul. Anybody? Nobody? Ain't got nothing. Anybody else for the Lord? Oh, I thought Stacy was going to get up and say, <laughs> Hallelujah. Come right on, my brother. Amen. Bringing his own water with him. Blue microphone, my brother. Blue microphone. <laughs> brother, brother, brother. Hallelujah. Jason, you got a song on your heart? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. All right, you've been obedient. Okay, let me have your Bibles. Amen. Let's lift them up for the Lord. Give God a good wave off and with the Holy Scripture, embarrass your flesh. Love your Bible. Love your Bible. Look at the book of Ephesians tonight. Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Let 
me to thank God for God's love. Amen. Amen. Thank God that he sent his only begotten son to this world to die for me and you. No greater love, amen, has ever been given. And I thank God we're, we're they call this Valentine's Day. I'm not, to, I'm not getting into the history. I ain't studied it again lately, but somebody by the name of Valentine done something back, way back then. But, it, you know, it's good. Uh, if you're married and you've got a godly marriage, you ought to thank God for that. And you ought to you, you ought to respect each other. And uh, God's given me a message on marriage tonight, but it might be going a little bit uh, one-sided. Uh, but it'll be for all, all God's people. Saying, "Praise the Lord." Uh, look over at your Valentine and say, "I love you." But make sure it's your Valentine. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for the uh, service tonight so far. Lord, the sweet spirit to sing. I ask God you take now, Lord, a uh, cold from off the altar north this old stammering tongue. Help us, Lord, as we try our best to preach the gospel tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd meet with us, God. And if there's any lost, saved, or backslid, God, they'd find a way to an altar of repentance. Lord, I thank you, God, for my wife. I thank you, Lord, that it's a day that we can tell each other. Every day, Lord, though, we tell each other we love each other. But, God, uh, just to put more emphasis, God, on this day. But, Lord, we thank you, God, for your love. Uh, God, that you gave your only begotten son, uh, Lord, to die on a cross. Uh, Lord, and rose again the third day, buried and rose again the third day. And God, know that uh, our Savior is sitting at the right hand of you. Lord, to make intercession for us. And God, there's no greater love than that. Pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you bless now, Lord, what you've laid upon our heart. Lord, speak to your people. Lord, touch those that are not here, those that's unconcerned. God, those that's unfaithful. God, those that's allowed something to hinder them from being in the Lord's house. Only you can speak to that one in Christ's name. Amen and amen. All right? Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at verse 21. I'll begin reading there. Let me get my, my Bible's finally falling apart. Don't, don't want it to fall the rest of the way apart. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That's what our problem is in America. We're not submitting ourselves in the fear of God one to another. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You may be seated. May the good Lord add his blessings to the reading of the scriptures. Just by the way of introduction tonight, I'm going to title the sermon, Amen. Uh, I think one time I preached a sermon on a marriage made in heaven. I'm going to preach, a, I'm just going to title this one, A Marriage from Heaven. Amen. A Marriage from Heaven. 
just by introduction, amen, the reason we have so many failed marriages in the day uh, that we live in is because we've thrown away God's original plan for marriage in the home. Uh, marriage is taken so lightly uh, in this generation. Uh, I didn't take time to look up the divorce rate. I uh, didn't take time to, uh, to look uh, at, at different statistics. Uh, but I tell you, God's original plan for marriage, listen, God's original plan for marriage, divorce is not even part of it. We go into marriage this day and time, and it's, it's with the attitude, well, this, this one don't work. We'll just, we'll just go file papers, and we'll try another one. That's not God's original plan. Now, I'm not here to try to uh, browbeat or anybody. I'm not here to try to discourage anybody that's been through a, a bad relationship uh, or a marriage that has split up. That's not my intention. But we still got the word of God when it comes to marriage. Amen. It's still the word. And I'm glad that God's a forgiving God. And God's a merciful God. And if he hadn't been a forgiving and merciful God, amen, I've never been divorced. But thank God. Let me tell you something. Did you know that uh, God divorced Israel? In the word of God? Won't take time to go there. Amen. But I'm glad God's loving and God's merciful and God's gracious and uh, that don't mean that you can't serve the Lord and go on with your life, amen, and hallelujah, and live for God. And I thank the Lord that he made it that way, amen. But um, I was told of a, I heard of a, read of a pastor uh, and an author, his name was Stu Weber, had said that the great problem in America is failure in the highest office of the land, and that's the husband and father. Uh, how many believe that marriage is a covenant? Marriage is a covenant, and you need to remember that, that marriage is a covenant and not a contract. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you look at marriage as a divine covenant, then you'll accept responsi your responsibilities in that marriage. Uh, but there's too many, amen, that, uh, that sees marriage as a contract. Listen, if, you, uh, if you, marriage is from heaven, how many will say amen to that? Uh, amen. Glory to God. And then, and we need to understand what God says about marriage. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Uh, now, husbands, we need to we need to check up there. We need to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Now, boy, that is a great love. I mean, that's a love. Amen. That hey, hey there's no greater. So I'm asking you men tonight, are you loving your wives? This is Valentine. Uh, we don't need to take for granted, well, she knows I love her. Right. Amen. You, you, need to, you need to show her you love her. You need to tell her you love her. Amen. And, cor and we need to love them like Christ loved the church. Now listen, Ephesians 5, 25. Husband, love your, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. God gave the husband some responsibilities. Amen. Uh, when it comes to our wives. Now somebody said, you should have preached this on Father's Day. Well, bear up. Amen. We might get it again in a little while. So the Lord don't come. First of all, I want to say tonight, the husband is to show reverent. Uh, amen, uh, or excuse me, the husband ought to show uh, servant leadership. Now, when I say that in here in, in, in Ephesians 5 and 21 uh, through 23, amen, let's read that again. Amen, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, there's a problem. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband, that's another problem, as unto the Lord. I, I, can I get a witness there? Uh, we've, that's, that's problems with homes and marriages. Uh, and then verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. Amen. Even as Christ, now I'm going to say that, that's another problem. And it's modern day generation. We don't like to hear these things, do we? And he is the, hey, glory to God, head, is he, is Christ, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Well, you can back me tonight. Yeah. Need to go a whole lot e e easier, praise the Lord. Um, but the, the husband, God instituted the husband to be the leader. Uh, God instituted the husband to be the head. Do you know that you're responsible, amen, for the welfare of your wife? Your wife is not responsible for your welfare. 
That's the way God set it up. Amen. The husband's responsible for your welfare. The husband's responsible for your spiritual welfare. Spiritual guidance comes from the husband. Amen. You're not to take spiritual guidance from your wife. Thank God for the few amen. Now, I ain't saying that the wife's not spiritual. But the husband's going to stand before God, amen, uh, for these positions in, amen, in their life. Listen, the word head, amen, used in Ephesians chapter 5 speaks of a leader, amen. This doesn't mean a dictator. It means a leader, not a dictator. And I've seen some men, amen, that were dictators to their wives. God didn't mean it that way. Amen. But, uh, but I'm talking about, about a responsible leader in responsible leadership. This, all doesn't, hey, this also doesn't speak necessarily of a, of a chain command, but rather a, of a line of responsibility. The husband has a responsibility to the wife. Amen. It ain't a chain of command. Oh, I'm the leader. I'm the head. I'm the man. Now, I had one lady look at me one time and said, well, he might be the head, but I'm the neck. And the head can't do nothing without the neck. Now, I, to me, I don't like sayings like that. Amen. And uh, so if you, you want to say that to me, you ain't going to get a. <laughs> Amen. To have, to have headship. Well, I'll just put it this way. For that lady to tell me that, she is out of the will of God. And it might, well, hallelujah, I better not go there. To have leadership, to have, to have headship is to have responsibility. Amen. A wife is to submit her, amen, to her, herself, to her husband. Amen. Glory to God. In loving leadership. Did you hear what I said? Amen. A wife is to submit to her husband. Amen. Uh, for loving leadership. Glory, hallelujah. God gives the model for the uh, servant, amen, servant leadership. Ephesians 5, 23, what did we say? I'm, I know I've read it. I'm going to read it again. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Jesus Christ is our model. Jesus Christ is our example. Jesus never forces us to do anything. He gives us an example of what we're to do. Now listen, amen, the headship uh, of one does not mean the inferiority, amen, of, a, of the other. Mm, I'm referring back to the dictator, amen. I believe you're to submit yourselves to your husband in the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis 3.17 talk, talks about, I believe God held Adam responsible for Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden. He created Adam first. Amen. He was the head, amen, of that garden. Amen. So, amen, when he seen that Adam needed a helpmate, what did he do? Amen. He put Adam to sleep. Amen. He done spiritual surgery on him, took a rib. Amen. Glory to God. And made woman, hallelujah, and she was to be his helpmate. Amen. amen. So, therefore, listen, and I, believe, and I believe God held Adam responsible for not leading and keeping his home as he should. We got, men, we got to lead the home. What is, a serv what is servant leadership? A leader's got to serve. In other words, it means to help uh, and assist. How many men in here really help and assist, amen, your wife? I'm talking about, hey, do something for Hallelujah. I thank God she washes my clothes. But they've been a few times, they've been the last couple of years, she couldn't. And I've had to learn to wash clothes. And I still would have to call her back up and ask her how to do some of it. I thank God for that. But sometimes, amen, a vacuum in the floor would help. I know I ain't done it in a while, honey. Amen. You're probably sitting there, you preaching to yourself, and I am. I am. Amen. Sometimes, amen. Listen, I'm talking about a leader must serve. Amen. Your wife was not created. Amen. Thank God she brings me a glass of water and a, and a drink, a diet sun kiss. Thank God for that. And while I'm sitting there, amen, in the recliner, I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. I, she, she ain't said it much, but amen. Sometimes you might have said, well, you got feet. But she's good to me, and I love her, and I thank God for that. Amen. And, and, and she does it because she loves me. 
But hey, there's sometimes I need to I need to get up and, and be a servant to her. Vacuum the vacuum the floor every once in a while. Sleep sweep the floor every once in a while. Boy, some of you men ain't gonna like me, are you? Amen. Sometimes, amen. Listen, we're, we're to be a servant. Amen. To listen, if we're to, hey, glory to God, if we're the head, amen, more or less, that means we're the master. And if you read the Word of God, amen, to, well, I ain't going to get to that. I, I thought about and was reminded today about how the, uh, amen, that Jesus girded himself, amen, and he, he went and he washed his disciples' feet. You know what Jesus done? He took on a he took on a servant's job, amen. And he knelt down and he washed his maybe sometime, amen. You might ought to you men get to get a wash basin out and wash your wife's feet. That'll be all right too. Just don't paint my toenails, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But being a servant, amen. And hey, glory. And by the way, amen. We ain't had feet washing in a long time. And I'm going to apologize to the church for that, but it ain't, hey, we're going to do it as quick as we can. All God people saying, somebody says, I don't know about all that stuff. Amen. You take communion, don't you? We ain't had it in a long time neither. Amen. Amen. We're going to do that pretty soon as quick as we can. All God people saying, well, I don't know. COVID's still going around. Amen. Listen, we can pass that thing around. You can get your own cut. We'll do it responsibly. If you ain't never participated in a foot washing, amen, you're humbling yourself. And by the way, we don't do mixed feet washing. Amen. For you, it ain't never done it. Hallelujah. But I've been in some good foot. How many's there been in some good foot washing? My, my. But I'm talking about serving. I'm talking about being a servant, amen, to your wife. Help. Amen. To assist, aid her, do something for her. Amen. Now, I know I asked my wife and I said it this morning. I know I told you I told her I love her and I, I, I'd I buy her three dozen of roses. Amen. Maybe I ought to just give her the price of the roses and bought them anyway. Because she couldn't tell me that she wouldn't been touched. It's quiet, ain't it? You know, the husband is, is to serve the wife and assist. Listen, the wife is not there really to serve the husband. <laughs> Boy, you men still love me. Amen. Amen. The wife's not really there to serve the husband. <laughs> Amen. If you'll go and read the scripture, we're really there to help and serve the wife. Now, don't misunderstand me. Amen. God did give her as a help me. Amen, and I'm thankful for God. And God knew we needed some help. Now, some of you ought to get on board there. I don't know what I'd do without her. Amen. Amen. Do you ever really stop and think what you'd do without your sweetheart? I mean, man, I, can, I can't imagine. Amen. Listen, I need her. But that's where the grace of God kicks in. Listen, um, the husband needs to be a true gentleman to their, to their spouse. Anybody here, and I'm not talking about when you dated, I'm talking about now, do you still go around and open the car door for your sweetheart? Look at that. Look at that. I was somewhere the other day, I was somewhere the other day, and I thought, well, maybe I should have opened the door for her. Ah, preacher, you're, you're, you're getting back like we like you were in your dating, amen. Well, she's still your sweetheart. Amen. When's the last time you opened the door for her? And you, hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm talking about hey, just being courteous, being a true gentleman. You done it because you loved her. No, you've probably done it because you was wanting to impress her too. Wanted, you to, wanted her to like you just a little bit more. How many's ever had the car door open for you? Raise your hand. Anybody? We got some. We got some. Hallelujah. Adam Jolly, you still do it? Sometimes. But his wife said sometimes. But that means you need to do a little bit more. What are you saying tonight, preacher? I'm saying we need to be a true gentleman. What is a gentleman? Honorable. Respect your wife. Respect her. I'm talking about how to have a good marriage and a marriage from heaven. Hallelujah. Respect her. Sometimes they don't get uh, they they don't get the respect they need. Amen. 
guess we're beating up on the men tonight, ain't we? Uh, we need to be courteous and we need to uh, amen, be polite. What would you burn that toast for? Supper ain't ready yet. Sometimes we're ill-spirited, ill-mannered. You feel bad, you'll snap off at your wife at nothing flat. And then you'll still expect her to give you some sugar when you get over it. I'm gonna get this. Husband needs to be a gentleman. A leader guides by example. First Peter five. One through three, amen, it needs to be an example, amen, we're to lead, the, you, well, preacher, what do you mean you're to be, the husband is to lead the wife, a husband is to be an example to the wife, and I'm not, there's a lot of things I'm probably leaving out, but uh, secondly, the husband is to sow sacrificial love, I mean, 520, Ephesians 5.25, love your wives, he said, husbands, love your wives. Even Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I know I've read it, read it, read it. A husband should be willing to die for his wife. If you're not willing to die for your wife, then you're not a Bible husband. You, you're not a husband that will sacrifice. If you're not willing to lay down your wife, your life for your wife. Now, what are you getting at, preacher? I'm talking about, listen, a husband should be willing to do that. A husband should also die to his ego. We got a problem. Men do. It's an ego problem. Any man in here would admit that you stop and ask for directions when you're lost? Amen. Some men won't do that. Anybody, any of you women won't tell on somebody? Amen. Husbands ought to die out to pride. Amen. And, and ambition. And I mean, I'm talking about for their wife. Amen. For their wife. And let me tell you another thing. Amen. Husbands, you, hey, you ain't always right. <laughs> now let's back up here and let's get. But women, you ain't either. But sometimes, amen, it's our ego that stands in the way. And we're to die out to that ego, amen, that macho, amen, that pride, amen. Listen, how should a husband love his wife? He should love his wife with passionate love. Your wife ought to know that you, she, that you love her passionately. I mean, why do you think they called that movie The Passion of Christ? It's because, amen, glory to God, he had the greatest love they were. Uh, listen, this the, the word. This is a passion that says, "I'm willing to die for you. I'm willing to give uh, give myself up for you." Most marriages need two funerals, amen, and one wedding. Let me say that again. Most marriages needs two funerals and one wedding, where both husband and wife die to themselves and come alive to Jesus Christ. Amen. When a man loves his wife. This passionately, I'm talking about that passionately, there's nothing too precious for him to give up. There's nothing too precious, amen, for him to give up for his wife except his relationship of Almighty God. You don't give that up, but there's nothing too precious that you can't give up, amen, for your wife. Most women don't mind being in submission. To a man who loves her enough to die for and shows it by the way he lives for her. My wife ain't in submission to me. Well, how you treating her? My wife, my, my wife, she, hey, I think I, it's just not right. It ain't good. And, and, and I just don't know about her. I, she needs to do more. Well, how are you living with her? How are you treating her? Amen. So, hey, a man will be in some, hey, a woman will be in submission to you. Hey, Amen. If you'll treat her right, we got to learn how to treat our women. They may, well, not our women, our, our wife. Somebody say, hey, "Man, I ain't, I ain't this crazy program on TV. That man's got five wives, sister wives. You've seen that, John? Sister wives. That's full of the devil." 
demons of hell. Can I get a witness? I'm talking about with purifying love. Amen. We'll look at verse 26 and 27 of our, our text. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. A husband's chief assignment I believe from the Lord Jesus Christ and from God is to make his wife a more radiantly beautiful Christian. Amen. That's why he's talking about the church there. But we're, we're, to, we're to help aid our wives in being a, a, a beautiful Christian. I mean, not to put her down, amen, not to run her down. I mean, listen, if, if he's, he's to intercede, amen, for her. He's to lead and teach and love her and protect her spiritually. I mean, he can never encourage her to, to do any impurity whatsoever. I mean, protecting love. What does verse 28 say? So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Uh, hey, as a man would want to protect his own body with his, amen, when his body's in danger, a husband is to protect his wife. A man is sick who does not protect his own body, and a man is maritish, maritally sick who won't protect his wife. You can't talk to my wife anyway. There's nobody ought to be able to talk to your wife. And by the way, If there ain't nobody can talk to your wife a certain way, you shouldn't be able to talk to your wife in that same manner. Sure, we have ill words sometimes. Anybody ever in here ever had an argument? One lady told my wife one time, you've heard me say it many times, well, I ain't had an argument. Me and my husband ain't argued in 20-some years, I think, at that time. 20-some years. I think they're a liar. Or they don't know the definition of an argument. Amen. I mean, a disagreement. She don't, she, don't, she don't agree with everything about me. All my opinions. Matter of fact, we disagreed today. On Valentine's Day. Disagreed. But she still loves me. That's what makes the world go round, Brother Keith. And I still love her. For no man, verse 29, ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Now, this is what the Lord's laid on my heart. To cherish means to warm, amen. To nurture means to feed and to nurture, amen, and mature, amen. So, listen, we, we have responsibility as, as men. Can I get a witness? Ain't going to be much longer. One more point, and it's not as long as the last two. The husband is to show steadfast loyalty. Look at verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and not the church. Nevertheless, let it, and the church, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. I believe the priority of marriage is, is the relationship between a man and his wife. The priority of marriage is, is the relationship between a man and his wife. That's the priority, amen. Uh, how, listen, uh, we're to be completely joined together. When, my, when I married my wife, I left mom and dad. You said, but you left behind them. I still left them. And she's still first. All God's people say it. Ephesians 5.31 shall be joined has the idea of being welded. We ought to be we ought, The Bible says we become one flesh. Amen. When me and her got married, amen, and we consummated that marriage, you know what happened? Became one flesh. 
If you live with somebody long enough, you about say what they're thinking. Brother Keith, Sister Joyce, you know what that's like? Sure it is. Sometimes she'll, sometimes I get ready to say something, she'll say it. Or the answer might be, the hey, the same. We're to be joined, amen, and hey, we need to be completely joined, amen. Mark 10, 9 says, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. No man put asunder. Well, if we get that back in our marriage vows this day and time. Yeah. The first marriage I ever done was her cousin, and she didn't want to say uh, obey. She didn't want to say obey. I got news for you. You want me to marry you? You'll say you'll be in subjection to him or you'll obey him. Every which one sounds the better to you. I went to my pastor, went to my former pastor, and I said, I got a problem. I mean, man, this was a, sad, this was a Friday before the, 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 the uh, wedding on Saturday. It was Rutherford County. And um, I, when we was doing, going over to vows, she said, I ain't saying it. She just was adamant about it. I ain't going to say it. I said, if you don't say it, I ain't marrying you. She called me. No, she called me on the phone. She, I said, well, we got a problem. So I went to my, I went to my pastor right quick, Brother R.J., and I told him about it, and he said, well, just tell her to say she'd be in subjection to him. That's what the word says. Same thing, it just didn't use the word obey. I, so I went back, and I said, well, if you'll say this, I'll marry you. Okay. And they're still married. Hallelujah. That's been how many years? I don't know. That's been a long time. Praise the Lord. I can't say that about everybody I've married. But it ain't my fault they ain't married. And they've split up. Hallelujah. Listen, what are you getting at, preacher? The purpose of marriage is that there is a blending until two become one. Liz, do you know what Travis is thinking sometimes? Well, he agreed. Hallelujah. What about you? Do you know what she's thinking sometimes? Jimmy? Kathy? <laughs> Daddy, do you know what Mama's thinking sometimes? <laughs> you had to get this. See, if you didn't hear her, she said, ask your daddy. <laughs> ask your daddy. about Stephen and Brandy sure it's the blending amen until the two become one the husband owes to his wife a steadfast loyalty loyalty I guess in closing tonight how's your marriage amen sometimes our marriages need a little bit of attention amen Sometimes it's good to just to go out and have a date. You had a date lately? You say nope or yep. Hallelujah. Was it nope or yep? yep. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to still make sure what I was hearing back there. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. You know, you still, you don't get too old to date. Amen. See, I still like it every once in a while when she, it's every once in a while, when she reaches for my hand. Can everybody, anybody get that? Yeah. I want us to stand at our feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. What about, what about the leadership, the servant leadership of the husband? What about the sacrificial love of the husband? And what about the steadfast loyalty of the husband. Nobody looking around the maybe need to maybe just need to bring your husband or your wife and just say, not because there's anything wrong, 
We just want to bring them around the altar tonight and say, I want to be the husband that the Bible wants me to be. I want to be the wife that the husband wants, or the, that the Lord wants me to be to the husband. I want that marriage that is settled in heaven. There's nothing wrong with that. God spoke to your heart. Now, because you come, don't mean anything wrong. But anybody need to pray for that? got some we got some young people in here maybe one of these days they're going to be looking they need to be a praying that God send them the right spouse the right husband the right wife maybe you need to come and pray let me tell you I, hey I've got got a sermon I'm sure on that or maybe you've maybe you've lost your spouse maybe your spouse is already in heaven Maybe they're unable to be with you tonight. And you just you just want to come and pray and seek the Lord. And the altar's open. Lord, I thank you for the word. Thank you, God, for the, uh, the time, God, of uh, Scripture tonight, Lord, and the preaching. God, help us, Lord, in our families, Lord, in our marriages. Uh, God, uh, help it, God, uh, keep, Lord, help us, dear Lord, to, uh, to always, God, keep it biblical. And God, always be honorable. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thought about preaching thought about one time preaching on uh, the book of Song of Solomon. That's a great love story. Great love story. Uh, never, I never, I think I may have preached one sermon, amen, from the Song of Solomon. Um, but there's a lot of information in the Song of Solomon. A lot of study to do. Amen, but... Uh, Anyway, how many enjoyed the service today? All right, we love you, church. And let's uh, remember, of course, Wednesday night, regular prayer meeting night. When I say prayer meeting, we've been doing the uh, course. I want to encourage you to get on board with that. Um, uh, do what we're supposed to do. Try our best to uh, be that soul winner God wants us Sometimes to Sometimes the way is long and hard. And sometimes I don't feel like traveling on. Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts. And sometimes I just want.